So I find that students often get confused by the difference between gear ratios and mechanical advantage. And gear ratios and mechanical advantage are not the same thing. In fact, simple gear trains do not even have mechanical advantage. And there's several ways to prove this. But the way we're going to prove it in this video is by showing that the force does not change. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, sure it does, Mr. Anderson. We apply the difference between the torques and gear ratios all the time. But you need to remember that torque and force are not the same thing. And so, yes, simple gear trains do affect torque. But that is not the same thing as force. And so that doesn't mean that gears affect force. In fact, they do not affect force. And to show you what I mean, let's draw ourselves out a simple gear train. And so let's start with just a simple driver gear. So let me skip a couple lines here to give myself plenty of room to draw this. But we'll just draw ourselves a driver gear. And we can even label this our driver. And let's say this driver gear has a diameter of 4 feet. And this is going to turn just a simple gear train. So this is not a compound gear train, just so we're clear. And so this driver gear is turning our first gear, and we can even label this our first gear. And let's say this first gear has a diameter of 12 feet. And our first gear then meshes with our second gear. And I'm going to make the second gear a little bit bigger than my driver gear, but a little bit smaller than my first gear. And we can label this our second. And let's say this one has a diameter of 6 feet. And then connected to our second gear is, of course, our third gear and I want this one to be the smallest gear out of the four and so this is our third gear and let's say it has a diameter of two feet now if I apply a force to the end of this driver gear so the outside edge of this driver gear I apply some force of 30 pounds and I'll call this force the force at my driver gear what would then be the force at my other three gears? And you might think, well, let's just put it equal to our gear ratio formulas and use our diameters. But once again, this is a force. This is not a torque. In fact, we can use this diameter and this force to calculate the torque. So what would the torque of our driver gear be? Well, you may recall the formula for torque was equal to the force times the radius. And we know the force on our driver gear. We just said that was 30 pounds. And we also know the radius of our driver gear. We said the diameter was 4 feet. That means the radius is half that. The radius is then therefore 2 feet. And so then the torque of our driver gear would be equal to 30 pounds multiplied by 2 feet. And then 30 times 2 is, of course, 60. Feet times pounds is foot pounds. And so that is the torque of our driver gear, which, once again, is not the same as our force. Our force is 30. Our torque is 60. They're not the same number, but they also don't use the same units. So the difference between torque and force is the same difference between miles and miles per hour. You use one to calculate the other, but that doesn't make them the same thing. And so we can't use gear ratio formulas to calculate out the forces that are applied to our various gears. But we can use it to figure out the torques, and then we can use the torque and the radius of each gear to find the force on each gear. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's start by finding the torque on our first gear. And to solve for this, I'm going to set my diameter output divided by my diameter input equal to my torque output divided by my torque input. 
and I know most of those numbers. So we can say uh, one proportion is equal to the other, and then we know the diameter of our first one is 12 feet, and then the diameter of our input is the diameter of our driver gear, which is 4 feet. And then our torque input is the torque of our driver gear, which we said earlier was 60 foot-pounds. And we don't know the torque output. That's what we're trying to figure out. So the torque of our first gear goes on top here. And then all we have to do is just cross, multiply, and divide. And so we get 12 times 60, so 12 times 60 divided by 4 gives us a torque for our first gear of 180 foot-pounds. And you might say, well, see, Mr. Anderson, the torque changed. It's three times bigger from the driver gear to the first gear, so the force does change. But once again, these are not the same number. But we can use this torque to calculate the force of our first gear. So if I know that torque equals force times radius, then I know force equals torque divided by radius. And so the torque of my first gear is 180 foot-pounds. And the radius of my first gear is not 12 feet, but half that, which is 6 feet. And so what is 180, sorry, 180 divided by 6? we get a force on our first gear of 30 pounds because feet cancels out. And so even though the torque increased, the force from our driver gear to our first gear, even though the first gear is three times as big, did not change. And we can demonstrate this in our second and third gear as well. So we can say the torque of our second gear we can solve for that using the same formula before, the diameter output divided by the diameter input. And so what are those numbers? Well, the diameter output in this case is 6 feet. And the diameter input is still our driver gear. Well, that's 4 feet. And the torque input in this case would still be 60 foot-pounds. And then we can just put the torque of our second gear on top. And then we cross multiply and divide this. So what is 6 times 60 divided by 4? We get the torque for our second gear is 90 foot-pounds. And that makes sense because our second gear is half as big as our first gear. So the torque would be half as big. But once again, the force of our second gear would not be equal to the torque. To figure that out, we would divide our torque by our radius. And so our diameter is 6 feet, therefore our radius is 3 feet. And so 90 divided by 3 is, again, 30 pounds. And then one more time, we can do that for the torque of our third gear. To solve for this, we will do the exact same thing. We will set two proportions equal to each other. And this time, our diameter input is 2 feet. I'm sorry, the diameter output. And the diameter input hasn't changed. It's still the driver gear. It's still 4 feet. And the torque of our input hasn't changed. That's still 60 foot-pounds. And then on top, we put the torque of our third gear. Well, what is 2 times 60? That's 120 divided by 4. We get a torque for our third gear of 30 foot-pounds. And that number might confuse you because that torque is equal to our initial force. But that's just a coincidence because the radius of our third gear would be 1 foot. Therefore, the force in this case for our third gear would equal the torque, at least the number value would equal the torque. But once again, that's only because the third gear has a radius of one foot. And so 30 foot pounds divided by one foot would just be 30 pounds. And so as you can see, the force did not change down our simple gear train. The force stayed the same. What changed was the torque.
but if the force isn't changing, then we can assume the mechanical advantage in this entire gear train is just one. And so then you might think to yourself, well, then what's the point of using a gear train? And that's a very interesting question. Why would we use a simple gear train if there's no mechanical advantage, if the force doesn't change? And the answer is we can use each one of these different gears to create a different wheel and axle. And so we apply an effort force to the first gear, which then rotates all the other gears in the system. We only have to rotate the driver and we can turn multiple wheel and axles at once. And so let's draw a drive shaft coming off each one of these gears, turning each one into a wheel and axle. And then at the end, let's draw an axle of the same size on each one of these drive shafts. And let's stop this video at this point. And in our next video, we can explore how these different gears with these different torques, these different sizes, how each one of them affect an axle of the same size.